people in in this area. We last week we had a session uh, by Professor Daminda Hakon uh, talking about data science, and there was uh, quite a bit of interest and requests uh, uh, in different areas. And one of the topics that uh, that was requested was to talk about machine learning, which is one of the biggest uh, areas in data science. So what we are going to do today is to have uh, Dr. Uday uh, talking about uh, machine learning. And uh, I mean, machine learning is a whole area. You can have a whole uh, course or semester or even a degree program on machine learning. But uh, what Dr. Uday will do is uh, to give a very brief introduction to machine learning. Uh, so that you get an idea of what it is. And then uh, we'll, uh, like last week, we'll have a small talk or very short uh, talk by uh, Dr. Buddhika, uh, who is who will talk about uh, one specific area of uh, uh, applying data science in uh, speech uh, processing. And also uh, we have something in store for you. We, are, we want you to not just listen to us, uh, observe, but to get your hands dirty by doing something uh, in data science. So we are going to introduce to you a very small data science challenge that uh, that you can do. Get your hands dirty, experience it. And uh, also we have a, a, a kind of a sponsor who is willing to give some uh, rewards for people who get to the top, right? So, uh, I mean, it's more a learning experience uh, for you to work in groups and uh, to learn about uh, machine learning uh, and apply it in uh, a kind of a data science application. Right, so uh, since uh, I've taken up my time, uh, we, we want to stick to the time. Uh, let me very briefly introduce Dr. Uday. I think uh, you already know Dr. Uday. He's uh, one of our lecturers, a product of University of Murutu, and he's uh, one uh, person who has uh, worked in one of a few of the top uh, tech companies in the world using machine learning uh, in the area of uh, data science and other uh, uh, areas. So let me uh, give it over to Dr. Uday to talk about uh, uh, machine learning. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Sian, uh, for, uh, for your kind words. Uh, uh, and uh, as he said, uh, he gave me the tough task of teaching, uh, introducing machine learning in 25 minutes. Um, yes. But uh, but I, I promise that I'll be on time. Uh, right now, 9.36 and uh, 25 minutes. So I'll, I'll stick to 20 minutes. So that's what I'm planning. Great. Um, so... I hope now you all can see my screen. It's coming up. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Visible now? Now it's visible, yeah. Quite right, great. Sweet. Okay. Oh, great. Um, uh, so, uh, as Dr. Sensor, so I'm going to basically introduce you to machine learning. So my objective today is to one is uh, uh, introduce you to machine learning. I will not teach you. I will never achieve teaching you. Uh, that's not the objective. But uh, I will throw some keywords to this uh, presentation, which will help you to go and ask Mr. Google, uh, you know, and and further uh, learn from there uh, what are the required uh, things to be helpful for the competition that uh, Dr. San was mentioning, and, and that was primarily my objective today to set you for that uh, competition. Uh, so what is machine learning, right? Traditional programming, uh, as you might know, that uh, you write a program uh, that uh, already been written by you, compiled by you, if it is a compiled program or a script, if in, in a scripting program, whichever the case it may be, um, uh, data, right, the input uh, to the computer. This program will take this input, uh, process it, and produce an output, right? That's a standard programming uh, idea, right, than a traditional program. In machine learning, basically computers will help you generate this program, first of all, right? How does it work is that you don't know how this program works. You, you really don't know exactly the logic. Like, you know, should I put any else? Uh, if, what kind of if condition I should put? Should I loop for 10 times? Or 10? You have no idea. But you know that for this set of inputs, right, set of inputs, there's one output that you are expecting to produce and you have no idea how this relationship is. Right? What is this function should be? If mapping this inputs to output, but this is a function F should be. So what this uh, machine learning does is you give this uh, data, to be precise, this is the input part, the output, expected output, 
right? I put E in front of expected output, and the computer will uh, process this and produce you the function f that, given the input, what the output should be, right? Then from there, what you do is um, uh, you supply this program, and then a new data, right? A new data, then later. Then it will start functioning in a real world. Like it will start producing the output that you expect. So now you have figured out what the program should be. So there are three types of machine learning that dominantly that you should know if you want to get into machine learning. Please remember, uh, uh, the, uh, at this point I am talking, there may be a new learning paradigm that is being created. There are many other uh, learning paradigms that has been uh, continue to create. Uh, but to begin with, these three are good enough, right? Broadly, the we split machine learning into two things that is supervised and unsupervised, right? And then there is this uh, another uh, interesting category reinforcement. We always talk that in the context of these two. So, what is supervised, as you can see, uh, you can see it is learning with a teacher. Uh, yes, is there a question? Oh, no, there, probably somebody forgot to mute. Okay. So, um, the first thing is supervised learning, that means learning with the teacher. Uh, second one is unsupervised learning. You are learning on your own uh, type of uh, approach. The third is reinforced learning, uh, learning where like you reward for learning. So these are the three strategies that we use for a machine to learn, right? So in the previous slide, as you can see, like uh, we were on the computer to figure out this function f, right? Uh, that's the relationship between input to output. To do that, there are three different dominant ways to do that, right? One is supervised, the other one is unsupervised, the third one is reinforcement. In supervised, there's a teacher who keeps telling what is right and what is wrong. In unsupervised, there's no rights and wrongs. You just figure it out on your own by using your cognitive ability. The third thing is, uh, you don't say rights and wrong, you basically reward for overall behavior, right? That's the third uh, approach for machine learning. So these are broader concepts, like uh, keeping that at this uh, broader level of understanding at this stage. Uh, let's go a little further, right? What is unsupervised? So you'll be given a data, right? You'll be given a data. In the unsupervised, please remember there is input data only. There is no target output that will be given to you. If you remember that machine learning, there is input data has two dimension, x1 and x2, and the data is given. Looking at this data, right? Uh, somebody here uh, coming up with an output saying, like, look, there are three groups in this data, right? And he's going to color them with red, green, and blue. And then that is basically the fundamental idea of under unsupervised. Right? You figure out what the target should be, and you kind of come up with the function that says there are three groups, what these uh, you know, groups are and who is going to what group and et cetera. That's, that's the classic idea of unsupervised. If you're going to supervise, right, you'll be given this two feature input data as well as you'll be given, these are the colors, these are the three groups that exist, right? The question to you is, the question to you is in the supervise is, right, when I give you a new guy like this, can you tell me which color he should belongs to? To do that, you come up with something known as a model, right? The function that we were to keep talking about, the F function, right? This model, right? The model here is these three lines I have drawn here, the black lines. After you know this model, like that is known as decision boundaries. This is sometimes called as decision boundaries. As soon as you know these three differences, now you know when a new guy come, how do I color it? Which color he, or which group he belongs to, right? So here, with this input, that decision making is difficult for a computer. As soon as a computer is given these three lines alone, right, and a new guy like this is given, you're all good to go to say which color he belongs to. And that is classically what is known as supervised learning, figuring out this model or, or decision boundaries, right? Well, I'm, I'm approximating certain things. Those who know machine learning well know, like, okay, where is regression? That it's, is it only classic? That kind of thing. Don't worry, this is just an introduction. So for those who are getting into machine learning, this is an introduction. That's the whole idea, right? So there are some approximation here that as you learn further, you'll find out that some of the things I'm saying is not completely true. Well, my presentation, I'm, I'm well within my time, I believe. Uh, so uh, which is going to tell you how you're going to work on this hackathon, right? So here is a 
steps here are the recommended steps i uh, uh, so as you go from left to right uh, it needs a little more understanding about machine learning and a little more reading about machine learning uh, and as well as uh, with the experience that you will learn the, the the right hand side parts a lot more strongly than the left hand side parts broadly so first what you do should do is like given a data you should clean it right but the data that is given to you you should clean it right so for you you will be given some sort of data like this uh, the input part the f one to f four we call them features or attributes and the target that you are supposed to predict right this guy so um, sorry so so that data is given to you how do you clean it up cleaning up means that identifying these red cells like maybe a column is not uh, useful or there are some issues going on with this column or maybe there is some rows or there are some red cells that are going uh, there are some issues going on how do i find that out well the i will tell you only one answer for now there are many answers always plot a histogram of histogram of each feature histogram of each feature right always plot a histogram of each feature that will tell you to begin with how to clean the data that's a first easy easy tip i can give you but there are many other things that i'm not going to go into detail the second question in front of us is that uh, how do i remove certain uh, features that i didn't want right to remove the features that you don't want then again there are uh, several techniques i'll give you the keyword that use correlation right that's a keyword i could give you uh, because you may want to get rid of the features that you don't want before you start building uh, the model uh, that means uh, drawing the region boundaries broadly right then the third step is uh, feature encoding right what is feature encoding i'll give you a very simple example let's say that you have a feature called gender and you have female male other these are three values that it gets one way to do it is like keep these features as one column and like use numbers for like you know 0 1 2 because machine learning always works with numbers not like you know english letters and labels broadly speaking uh contrastly you can do something like this you can create three columns and then just put one for wherever that you see uh, uh, the appropriate feature and zero for this so why we do this dumb thing there are some reason for using the space putting a lot of zeros why do i am doing it there are some reasons behind it i am i can't uh, explain that reason right now um, come to data science course take my machine learning module i will teach you uh, or just go to google and figure out Uh, but broadly what i want you to understand is there are various encoding techniques that you may want to explore as part of this uh, you know machine learning that will help you so why there are some of the popular techniques are like one hot encoding multi hot encoding label encoding and many other right this is very fundamental right so then next thing i would like to introduce is feature crossing feature crossing means what uh, so you can basically take two feature and put them together into one feature so look at this like i have taken x1 feature and x2 feature and i'll create a new feature called x12 right and i'll give these guys a value 0 and these guys a new value 1 right and this is what is known as feature crossing right uh, so maybe like gender and age and i group them using gender and age both together and into one new feature right so that that's the broader idea of uh, feature crossing uh, this is again a very popular i lost to there yeah we i also lost i think uh, there's a bit of a connection issue uh let's give a uh, few minutes i think you should be able he's there on he's on the... there with there yeah ah yeah coming yeah. back yeah coming it's back. just a temporary glitch <laughs> all right that's a classic example of outliers so there your audio is not very clear handle it uh, pardon my Oh, there. I think we lost you at the point where you said, "Come to my machine learning class." Is it better now? Yes. Yeah, yes. better, better. Yeah. 
yeah yeah is it is it better now audible now yeah, audible uh, screen audible, sharing but... is not yeah Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go back to screen now. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yes. sorry, sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, so, so um, uh, I, I hope that uh, you, guys, you guys broadly got the feature crossing. So uh, you have started with the data set features and a target. And then you, you basically do some magic here to correctly make it into a, 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 a friendly sort of outcome for machine learning, right? Uh, after you sort of do this, then um, uh, you know before you start modeling, there is another thing that you might want to do is feature selection and ranking, right? So what is feature selection and ranking is that uh, basically you don't want to use everything that is given to you as it is. Sometimes you have to drop it, sometimes you have to convert it. Uh, to do this, you have to pick the best and try, right? Uh, this is very important in machine learning because uh, this really defines the success of the uh, machine learning outcome. To do that, uh, and again, there are algorithms uh, uh, developed for it already there, like uh, feature ranking algorithm and feature rank selection algorithm. Again, the correlation uh, might help you here, uh, as well as uh, there are various kind of correlation to begin with. Uh, also, information content is another angle to look at it. Uh, I'm just throwing keywords. I know it's, it's a bit, may, it may look a little overloaded, but you know that's, that's how uh, computer science is going to be. So just get used to it, right? All right, great. Now, uh, feature embedding, right? Feature costing, we have talked about feature embedding is one thing before I go to the uh, last uh, set of things. The idea of feature embedding is basically what, uh, you know, the, um, the broadly nowadays uh, uh, talked out, uh, uh, you know, uh, deep learning. So very popular idea, uh, recently got real lot of traction. I don't think this will be really uh, deep learning is not the, not an approach that you will be taking for this hackathon. However, I'll tell you another idea that can be used for feature embedding that is useful for uh, feature selection as well as feature embedding in this hackathon that is principal component analysis, PCA, right? If you don't understand, go and Google about it. It will tell you. It's basically taking X, Y, Z features, convert into P, Q, R features and selecting only PQ. That's the broad idea. And dropping R or like something unused and uh, something that is not so useful, right? Now, one last thing that you should know before you build any machine learning model is train, test, and validate. So you'll be given uh, original data. First of all, split it into training and testing, right? Uh, roughly recommended idea is that eighty percentage of the original data here, twenty percentage here. Then. Uh, you can further split it into 80 and 20 for a reason. I will come to this later. First of all, you split it into 80, 20 training testing. All right. Use this training guy, right? The training's part of the data and build the model, right? Meaning that finding the decision tree or decision boundaries or whatever, right? Build the model only using that. Then you know the answers to this guy, right? This is classic exam paper type of thing. You know the answers. That's what we do, right? We don't give you everything that we know in a, in a class. Like we basically give you some examples. We work out some examples in the classroom. That is the training phase. But for the exam, we keep some questions, right? And we give that in the exam and see whether you really understood the concept and pass it in the exam. Right? Same idea here. So you build a model using the training data. Keep the testing data 30% out of it, right? Use that to evaluate this model that you have built, right? And see whether you have done, the model has really passed the exam, done a good job with the exam. And then when you, when somebody asked me like, okay, uh, your student, it, uh, you know, uh, Smith, uh, how is he doing? I never report his performance in the class. I mostly report his performance in the exam, right? That's why exams are important. Same here. If you want to report a performance of a model, always talk about the testing, not about the training, right? It's, so that's broadly how we build model and evaluate model to decide which model is better, right? All right. Because you, you can see that, uh, you know, to an extent, machine learning is a trial and error process. So with that, what is validation then? Why do we further split into 80, 20 and do validation, right? Well, there are certain models that need some uh, hyperparameter tuning. What is hyperparametering? I'll tell you very simply. You will build a model, right? And there may be a threshold that you need to supply, let's say. Now you have a model as well as a threshold, uh, threshold right? So where, why do, how do I decide what is the right threshold? Very simple. 
use this 20 percent to decide the threshold and then use this 20 percentage to test the model and report this is to decide threshold that is tuning this is testing and then report performance finally this is the most advanced concept that you should know in machine learning if you are building any machine learning model right and after this i'll give you some time to question if you really have right? boosting bagging balancing and ensembling i hope i have uh, another four minutes left sir is, I mean, yeah, yeah go ahead go ahead okay great sweet um, um so why we need to do this i'll tell you why we need the first thing before we understand any of the first three b's let's understand this guy ensembling what does that mean right so now you have let's say a data right you can build the uh, machine learning models using various algorithms right i'll throw something like naive base svm right decision tree and many more you can basically build a, uh, you know do another way like okay you have some data right i did some feature selection algorithm one and another feature selection algorithm here right some portion of the data i used and build a model one and model two and evaluated model one performs 80 percentage or something this is 78 right so this is a classic practical situation that you will face now how what kind of algorithm what, which one i should choose should i choose model one or model two right so it's a no-brainer you choose the model with the highest test performance right it's a no-brainer however later machine learning uh, experts have figured out like why do you want to throw this m2 guy like he may be also useful just build a team out of these guys like that's the whole idea of ensembling broadly speaking you build one model here another different models here like you know various kind of models here um that sorry my bad um, how do i undo here okay these are the models different models Using these different models, there are different uh, decisions that are given. Like uh, first two models gave one, third model gives the two as answer, the fourth model also giving one as answer, right? You merge all the answers and then use something like majority voting, like give the give the answer that given by many people, basically, right? So that's the idea of ensembling. Don't just pick one model and move. Like if you build multiple models, why don't we use all of them together in a smart way possible? Right. To do that, there are various ways to sort of merge them. Right. That is where boosting and bagging come into the picture. Bagging is basically if you have this much of data. Let's say that I gave you uh, two thousand, uh, you know, examples. Remember this table, features here, and target as the predictor. One, two, three, four. These two thousand examples here. Right. So then I will randomly sample like thousand uh, from it. And then build models from each of this random sample of those. That's overlapping sample. That's okay. Right. Then use all these models to build a you know meta model or like voting. Just merge them using one way or the other. That is bag. Well, boosting do the same thing but in a sequential way. Like we will basically select uh, some portion of the data, build a model, then another portion of the data. And append the model, and basically we just improve the model in a sequential way, and then finally come up with a better model. These are two approaches in, uh, you know, uh, towards doing the ensembling. Again, as I said, probably I'll spend uh, roughly thirty minutes if I teach it in a class, which I did in thirty seconds, so you can understand how much I can really chip in here. Finally. Balancing the other part before you do a model building, check your class uh, number of times the target variables over a class distribution of the target variable. Let's say that you are trying to predict uh, an email is spam or not spam, right? So you would expect the spam emails here and not spam emails here. Let's say maybe other way around. That's okay. So if this is how your data is, right? You have really large number of one class and really small number in the other class. Before you do building, you have to balance it out. You can you have two ways to balance. One is undersampling, other one is oversampling. Which one works better? Well, nobody knows, right? You have to try try it and trial and error again. There are some recommendations, but broadly it's a trial and error process. 
right so under sampling is basically randomly choose only necessary amount from the large guy or sampling means just repeat this orange guys enough to fill it up up to the blue guy all right here is one uh, mantra that you should know if you are pursuing machine learning all models are wrong okay please remember that but some are useful right here is my philosophical view towards it this f guy remember that function f i told right think that nature or the god here he knows the right f and here we will have the data we will keep trying to figure out this f guy and this f guy is really complex okay it's infinitely complex so in this process we will never reach this we don't need to but as long as you reach a point that is useful good to go and that is exactly george box uh, said in back in 1990 right all models are wrong when it comes to machine learning pretty much all models are wrong but as long as it's useful you are good to go congrats you finished the crash course a uh, short course on ml thanks for your research thanks to you yeah we can uh, maybe give a certificate right <laughs> yeah yeah why not okay any quick questions uh, you can either uh, unmute and ask or maybe send it on chat or else we can go to the uh, yeah uh next part and we can still be available uh, to answer uh, questions from uh, anything do you have any questions guys they are all known people right they should be able to unmute and ask uh, or as you said use the chat but uh, you can always unmute and ask I think I over overfit the data. <laughs> That's right. We can do a validation and yeah. check. <laughs> Give a couple. Yeah, of we can. We can do a validation and check. Yes. Ask a couple of questions. Yeah, guys, uh, we can ask. Let's uh, yeah gradually see whether we could move towards that. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you'll have a lot of questions uh, when I describe to you about the uh, <laughs> uh, the challenge that we have. Right. So, shall we go to uh, Dr. Budhika and quickly get back to the challenge uh, description of the challenge? Sure. 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 Yeah. yeah okay. Right. So, uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Budhika once again. He's a lecturer at uh, Computer Science and Engineering. a uh, product of uh, university of morotu and uh, he got his phd from hong kong university of science and technology and also he spent uh, uh, spent a, a little bit of time at uh, hong kong university of science and technology working in uh, this area of uh, uh, speech processing so uh, once again uh, similar to uh, what i gave uh, dr uday i'm giving Dr. Budhika, very short time to just give you a brief idea about uh, ap an application in uh, data science, application area in data science. Right, uh, over to you, uh, Budhika. Thank you, Dr. Shyam, for the kind introduction, and uh, many thanks for Dr. Uday Uday as well. It was a very informative and uh, useful session. Session. So uh, my part here, uh, as Dr. Shyam mentioned, would be very uh, brief, uh, briefly to introduce uh, an application area, which is uh, speech processing. I hope uh, I'm audible uh, to everyone. Yes, Dr. Budhika, loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, all right, so let's get started. Uh, so I uh, prepared a little bit of uh, um, some of the uh, points that I'm going to talk about because uh, speech processing uh, in overall, it's a huge uh, area of uh, study and research. Uh, I'm going to briefly introduce about uh, speech processing to talk about uh, what is speech processing. and uh, some of the application areas like uh, automatic speech recognition uh, speaker recognition and uh, speech synthesis okay so we quickly move on uh, to introduce uh, what uh, in a broader sense what uh, speech processing uh, means so it is uh, the study of speech signals 
and uh, processing methods of signals. So essentially, it's a uh, method of signal processing. So in this case, it's uh, audio signals or speech signals. And then uh, processing those uh, signals, we can devise methods for information retrieval from the speech data. Right, so that's very simply put uh, what we mean by the process of, or the processes of uh, speech processing. We move on now, uh, since uh, we are much interest, interested about how data science and how uh, managing of data can help uh, these application uh, areas. Let's see how uh, speech data uh, is available, especially in the current days. So for example, I'll take uh, YouTube uh, as an example. Daily, uh, it is recorded uh, that uh, at least 500 hours of video content is uploaded to the platform, to the YouTube platform. So uh, we can uh, easily understand uh, what amount of data uh, that is uh, recorded data that is available. Uh, but uh, however, I should note that these data are much unorganized. They are not organized. Uh, so in the perspective of a data scientist or a data engineer, uh, there's much room for using this kind of data, uh, which is available, which can be available in public and trying to extract information and uh, making useful models uh, using these data. So developing models, you just had a very good introduction uh, from Dr. Bilder. Uh, how do we go about uh, developing models using data, right? So the basics are, uh, I, I like that, but uh, as you gradually move on, there'll be much uh, complex, uh, more complicated uh, approaches uh, you will find later on. So that's one example, YouTube. And then uh, I can uh, also introduce call center recordings. Uh, I'm sure all of you at some point has called uh, to a customer care center. It could be a telco company. Uh, it could be electricity or any other utility. But uh, when you call that, when you call them, when you call, uh, talk with an act uh, actual person, uh, you would probably hear a recording saying that uh, these all these conversations will be recorded. for uh, could be for quality assurance purposes. So imagine the number of calls that are being received daily, once again, if you take it, um, to these kind of call centers and how, what amount of data that are recorded uh, in this, that kind of a situation. So lots of data are available. That's what I want to emphasize uh, by bringing out these points. And of course, uh, even now we are with, uh, uh, using a virtual conference uh, system, which is Zoom, and it is being recorded, uh, both uh, video and uh, audio as well. So imagine the number of uh, hours that we have in such uh, virtual conference recordings, right? So my, I think uh, my point should be clear that we have lots of speech plus visual data available uh, in these kind of platforms. But however, as I said, uh, they are not organized. The task, the initial task of organizing uh, those data and trying to come up with the ways to uh, interpret those data would be one of the major challenges of a data scientist or a data engineer. Right, so I move on. So this is one of the major application uh, um, topics or so application uh, scenarios in speech processing. That is what we call automatic speech recognition or uh, in short, uh, ASR. So this is uh, to simply put, converting, automatically converting someone's speech to text. All right, so you have a diagram here. Um, so, so when someone is speaking, uh, for example, the microphones can pick up that uh, voice and uh, send it through the ASR system. And the uh, responsibility or the functionality of the ASR system is to convert those um, voice or voice data that, or in other words, what has been spoken by that person uh, to text. So if you, someone says something like, uh, this is a very, very tough one, uh, seashells, seashells. So in order to uh, convert that, uh, if the ASR system is good enough, it will convert to textual data. So there has been uh, multiple, many approaches, uh, like uh, more conventional approaches would be uh, what we call hidden Marco models, or in later, or in the modern days, uh, people uh, 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 largely use uh, deep learning uh, methods like the recurrent neural networks and so on. Um, to achieve automatic speech recognition. Remember all these approaches are data-driven approaches, all right? So we need to deal with a lot of data. It could be uh, possibly uh, supervised learning or unsupervised learning. 
all these different kinds of um, combinations of methods can be used as well. So why do we need the ASR? So in, in other words, what kind of applications do we have with the uh, ASR systems? Uh, it could be speech analytics and uh, possible that uh, at least some of you have used uh, these virtual assistants uh, like Apple Siri, Google Assistant, Alexa, and so on. Uh, it's, it's on your palm, basically. You're, 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 you might be using it the, in your day-to-day -day life as well. And also something like uh, in-car systems. So these are only only a very uh, very short list I have here, but uh, there are many other applications as well. So that's about uh, automatic speech recognition. And I quickly move on to another uh, application area, which we call uh, speaker recognition. So in previous case, the uh, objective was to convert the speech data into text, but here in speaker recognition, as the name suggests, um, the objective would be to recognize someone or identify someone or a speaker using their voice. Okay, so in application, um, speaker recognition systems could be uh, in, uh, in two main categories, uh, speaker identification and speaker verification, but I'm not going to go into much details uh, about these things uh, as, uh, as uh, I mean, basically you can uh, dig more information about these topics. Uh, if you basically go to Google and do a simple search, you believe there'll be lots of information and there'll be lots of uh, research work that's uh, related to these areas. And uh, what is the uh, application of data science and machine learning into these uh, areas would be building up the system basically. So I have, uh, I have a kind of a flow diagram here uh, that explains some uh, some processes involved in uh, speaker recognition, uh, like uh, some boxes you see here, feature ex extraction. You already have some idea what feature extraction is from the previous talk and uh, coming up with the model, speaker modeling in this case. So in this case, the model's objective is to uh, create what we call a voice print, something that's unique for a person. So that voice print is created uh, from the speech data from that specific person. So only uh, one person can, hand, can have only one uh, unique uh, voice print. So based on that voice print, uh, systems can identify or system can uh, verify a certain, uh, whether this person is the uh, same person. So what are the applications? Uh, so approaches, as I said, there can be, I can list multiple uh, uh, approaches that, uh, that are data driven. It could be like uh, support vector machines, universal background modeling, and so on, deep uh, neural network methods, and so on. All these are data driven, and we need uh, structured, well organized, labeled data to come up with uh, good systems for uh, speaker recognition. And what are some of the applications? Um, uh, mainly as a biometric authentication method. For example, uh, say you're doing phone banking, you call your bank, and you need access to your bank, bank account details. And uh, what you can do is uh, in a modern day, uh, maybe some of the banks are already doing it, uh, possibly not in Sri Lanka, but in some other countries, some banks are using uh, voice biometrics. Uh, so basically when you call, the system can identify uh, your voice. So rather than giving out a password or a passcode in, in, in like in traditional approaches, uh, what these systems do is you cut, they try to identify using your voice. So we call it, uh, speaker recognition approaches. And also it can be used in uh, digital forensics and so on. Right, quickly moving on to uh, another uh, application area, uh, which is called speech synthesis. So in this case, so if you have experience in using uh, personal assistants, uh, you know that uh, the assistant can understand or can uh, decode uh, your speech as well as generate some speech, right? So generation part, is, um, is what we call speech synthesis or also called uh, text to speech. So in a, in a, in a, in a uh, common uh, personal assistant like Apple Siri, they use both uh, ASR, that is automatic speech recognition as well as uh, speech synthesis systems combined together to come up with that uh, uh, personal assistant, right? So the concept is like that. So in other words, it's artificial production of human speech. So I have an example here. Um, so let me try to play that. Hopefully you can hear it. And uh, perhaps you can tell me who that person is. The United States.
I think it's very straightforward. Anyone can tell me who that was? So I didn't hear anything beyond the United States, but that was good enough to identify the speaker. <laughs> okay, let me let me try to play that again. The United States is considering, in addition to other options, stopping all trade with any country doing business with North Korea. Was that better? Yes, yes. Okay, so anyone? Uh, yeah, I think we are getting some responses. Yes, Trump, obviously. <laughs> uh, it's unmistakable, that voice, right? So the, the fascinating thing is that uh, Donald Trump never spoke this specific phrase, all right? So, um, so this is, in other words, this is artificially generated speech that, is, uh, that uh, mimics Donald Trump's voice generated from a text to speech system or a speech synthesis system so you can identify, you can get a uh, i mean get a uh, brief idea of what uh, how capable can these systems be right i mean the the it helps that donald trump has a lot of uh, speech data uploaded to youtube uh, not by himself of course but uh, in, in from different uh, media uh, units and so on so there's lots of publicly available uh, speech data from donald trump so that helps sort of come if you get those data from YouTube and uh, try to devise uh, some uh, models like uh, speech synthesis systems, then you can um, build up models like this and you can get results like this. So I find that uh, personally, I, I find that fascinating and uh, kind of terrifying at the same time. Right, so that uh, basically concludes uh, my speech. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, have, the United States is considering, sorry. in addition to other options, stop. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any That's quick it. questions? Uh, uh, any qu uh, quick questions on uh, what would Dr. Budhika shared and also Dr. Budhika shared? Um, a lot of information to process, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Ah, Uday is asking. <laughs> Yeah, actually, Dr. Day, I, I did try this system because uh, this was taken from a kind of a publicly available uh, API called uh, Liabird. And I did, <laughs> did upload my voice and created, uh, I mean, it was not good as this because there was only a limited amount of data I could uh, give them. Uh, so it's in a way, in other words, uh, if you look at it from another perspective, they have more data, right? They have my data as well. <laughs> So it was not as good as this, but for Trump, they have a lot of data. Thanks, noted. So uh, if I ask a question, uh, Dr. Buddhika, if, uh, if we take some um, speech synthesized data to a court, uh, would it be possible to figure out whether it's the original person or a fake? Uh, I, I'm not uh, very sure about the legal uh, uh, background about that, but I believe uh, at some point, yeah, technically, yes. Technically, you could have uh, systems, uh, I mean, standard systems which provide uh, I mean, speaker verification, or I mean, you can have speaker verification uh, systems as well. Uh, I mean, uh, or you can have other systems to detect whether this is the same person or or a computer is doing it. So in that case, we also we call it uh, spoofing detection. Uh, yes, technically that's possible. Okay, um, shall I uh, then, because we have about another 10, 12 minutes, uh, you can continue to ask questions, right? So if you have a question, uh, continue to ask on the chat, uh, uh, we will respond to it. Uh, let, me, uh, let me share uh, what we have on st in store for you as part of a you know, machine learning challenge or a data science challenge. As uh, Dr. Uday explained to you, uh, uh, we do have, uh, I mean, uh, we, we do have a challenge that where you would be able to 
uh, maybe use uh, some of the things uh, that as Dr. Uday said. And uh, as he correctly uh, said and encouraged you, uh, you can go to Google and also, um, yeah, um, we are going to also have a forum available on the on the Moodle page where you can uh, ask questions about uh, uh, how to. Uh, I mean, if you have any any about the competition itself or the challenge itself, and also if there's any uh, anything uh, else that you want to find, uh, you try Google, <laughs> and uh, if you are getting uh, whatever confused or you are unable to figure out, you can uh, maybe ask because we have all our. Um, I mean, lecturers who are into data science available on that uh, page uh, would be able to uh, help you. Right, so uh, yeah, let me share my screen and uh, quickly go through this. Uh, what we have here is, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah, can you see my screen? We can. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. So uh, this uh, uh, this is the um, Moodle page. Uh, you can all see this. Uh, I don't need to uh, share this on the screen, but just to point out a few things. Right. So um, our objective is, as uh, as we as I mentioned earlier, to give, get you get your hands dirty uh, through this. Um, uh, um, I mean, through this uh, challenge, so that you would be able to do some of the things. Uh, uh, be able to do some of the things uh, that uh, that was explained. Right, so to do this, uh, we have to put some uh, rules and regulations or some uh, what you call uh, framework. Uh, but main objective is to <laughs> have fun and get uh, uh, gain some uh, uh, knowledge. Right. So uh, uh, what we have said is we'll make it into a three-person group and minimum also three, maximum also three, and then uh, you can either. Uh, I mean, uh, we are going to use a, a platform called uh, Kegel. Uh, I will show you uh, after I uh, go away from the Moodle page, I'll show you uh, 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 the platform that we are using, right? So you can either uh, make a group, uh, I mean, you have to make a group on this uh, uh, Moodle page. Uh, just uh, any, 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 uh, anybody who is available in this Moodle page, is, uh, we do have uh, second years and third years uh, computer science and engineering students available here. Uh, either you can have it from your group uh, batch or uh, cross batches, uh, whatever you like, right? Make it a three person group. But you, as I said, uh, you have to make uh, your group in this. Uh, we have a group selection uh, uh, available, right? So uh, you need to select your group here and then only you should uh, uh, try to uh, take part in it. All the data, the rules, regulations, descriptions, everything is available on the Moodle as well as on the Kegel platform, right? Uh, but why we are making it available on the Moodle is to uh, take advantage of uh, the data-free opportunity that we have, rather than uh, if you if you access Kegel, Kegel is actually a uh, outside uh, website, not uh, white listed uh, for free data, right? But uh, we would like uh, you to use it there so that we can uh, we will be able to monitor uh, the the what you call the uh, the group. Uh, uh, I mean, who is on the, at the top, if there's, there's a leaderboard uh, available on Kegel that would uh, enable us to uh, see who is at the top and things like that. But uh, you will be able to do, like, uh, you will be able to validate your solution, everything uh, on, on Moodle. Yeah, so so we are giving you a, a data set uh, of uh, what uh, Dr. Uday said, something called a training data set, right? So the description uh, uh, of the data set is uh, uh, given on Moodle, right? So. Uh, how many data points are there and also in addition to that we are giving you what we call a test data set right so this test data i mean in the in the training data set uh, we you know dr uday said that uh, uh, there is something that we are trying to focus this is a prediction or a classification task right so in this case uh, uh, we have actually collected data we have put a sensor uh, uh, or a few sensors outside on, on a roadside and then we have collected the uh, 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 data while the vehicles are passing through uh, through through the road, right? So we have collected, and what we want to find out. I mean, we have collected it for something else, but what we are going to do here is to uh, be able to come up with a system or a model, right? A machine learning model that can say whether there is a vehicle on the road or not, right? It's simple, one or zero, yes or no, right? So that is what uh, you need to do, right? So in the training data set, we have given you 
when the vehicle is there, when the vehicle is not there, in addition to that, all the readings that we have collected from our sensors, right? A lot of readings, right? Some may be useful, some may be not useful, right? So that is what Dr. Uday said. Uh, we may need to select what data uh, columns are uh, important and not, right? right? And then in the test set, we have all again given you all the readings, right? All the readings are given, but one column is missing. The yes, no column, whether the vehicle was there or not is missing, right? So what you need to do is come up with a model to tell us uh, whether there was a vehicle at that given data point or not, at that given uh, point in time, whether there was a vehicle or not. Right? So you can do that. You build your model and then you can uh, validate it, right? So uh, uh, we have uh, uh, in this page itself, we have, uh, it's not available for you yet, once you belong to a group, uh, it will be available for you. I will show you. We have a, a kind of created a, a, a quiz within the Moodle that would allow you to uh, submit your answer, the solution. I mean, there's a format uh, how you need to give the solution. All the instructions are given on, 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 on Moodle. And uh, you can drop it here and then uh, see how well you have done, right? So the, we won't say exactly this data point was correct, this data point was wrong. I mean, even in an exam paper, your lecturer or the teacher will tell you, this is this question, you got it right, this question, you got it wrong. We are not going to give you that. We are going to tell you overall how well you have done, right? So that, uh, uh, I mean, if you give that answer, then uh, it's uh, the challenge is going to be easier, right? But so what we're going to do is we are going to tell you overall how many uh, data points uh, did you get, uh, uh, get right, right? So from that, you can get an idea of uh, uh, how well you have done. Right. Uh, any any questions while I go to Kaggle and show you uh, uh, the platform that we are going to use? Any any questions? Others also. I uh, hope you will uh, uh, look at the chat and. Uh, Right, so this is the platform that we are using, Kaggle. It's an open uh, platform, um, I mean, uh, for lots of competitions. Uh, this is kind of a private competition, in-class competition uh, that we are, we, are, we are doing, right? So therefore, uh, I would uh, encourage you uh, not to share, I mean, this is publicly available, not to share the data and the link uh, with the outsiders. Uh, but we'll try to keep it within, uh, within uh, ourselves. Um, yeah, so um, uh, all the information that is available on Moodle is also available here if you want, but as I told you, if you go here, you might, uh, uh, you will be uh, charged for the data access. Uh, but once again, remember, you need to, uh, I mean, for you to be counted uh, for, uh, what do you call, uh, yeah, we do also have some rewards, as I told you. Uh, for that, you need to make sure that uh, you submit it on, on Kegel, right? So uh, that is, uh, and we do have a read leaderboard. At the moment, there's no, nothing on the leaderboard, right? So uh, finally, when, uh, let me show you. Uh, uh, yeah, let me show you uh, a previous one that I ran, right? So uh, like this, uh, we will be able to see who is at the top, right? So as I told you, we are going to run it in teams. Right, so either your team name should uh, will appear here, or one person can may have a because you need to have an account on uh, Kegel. Right, so you, that person can have an account on Kegel, and uh, and uh, represent the team. Right, and uh, uh, whatever he submits on Kegel will be evaluated automatically on at that time, and uh, we will be able to see that on the leaderboard. Right, right. So yeah. So yeah. So I didn't explain that part. Uh, uh, this uh, evaluation will be done in two parts. One is what we call the public uh, part, right? So public uh, is uh, where each day uh, twice you can submit on Kegel. On Moodle, you can submit uh, every six hours, right? So we put some restrictions. We don't want you to be just uh, without, uh, without understanding the machine learning model. We don't want you to, to just throw answers at the system and try to figure out what is right, right? So we don't want you to do that. So there are some restrictions. Right, so uh, part of the data set uh, will be used uh, to tell you how well you are doing. And then we have also kept a few uh, data items to check ultimately how well you are doing, because ultimately, um, uh, I mean, at the end of the competition, uh, how well you are doing, right? So there is what we call a private leaderboard uh, that, we will, uh, uh, that we will reveal only at the end, right? So the ultimate winners uh, will be uh, uh, selected based on this uh, private, uh, yeah. You can ask, I mean, uh, since I'm uh, also running out of time, I will uh, 
I will uh, stop there, but uh, if you have any questions or you can continue to ask on the forum, right? Others, anyone else you want to add anything uh, that I missed uh, about the competition or the challenge? So everybody is like overfitting the curve, right? <laughs> Looks like you covered everything. Yeah, yeah Shan, you are trying to say something. Uh, only thing I, I may have missed is this uh, private and public pillar, but we'll uh, we'll put it on the discussion, right? So if you have any questions, I feel like I didn't explain it uh, clearly, but uh, but uh, for Dr. the moment, Shahan, the timeline. Yeah, one month. We will give it till. Uh, uh, yeah, so in this one, uh, this is not my competition, the old one. Yeah. Uh, we are giving till 10th of July, right? 10th of July. Uh, uh, right? So we will have another challenge after this, right? So if we still have more time, we'll have another challenge. Right? But uh, take part in this one and uh, maybe weekly we will uh, highlight uh, the people who are on the top of the leaderboard, right? So don't wait till the last minute because you, you can't wait till the last minute. If you wait till the last minute to do it, um, uh, one thing is you can't uh, submit more than one, one or two on the last day, right? So uh, uh, try to do it early, right? And be on the leaderboard. We'll, we'll definitely hi highlight the people, uh, groups who are on the top of the leaderboard, right? So we have uh, till the end of July. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, as I told you, we have uh, discussed with the uh, sponsor, uh, probably yes. dialogue. Uh, we will have uh, uh, rewards. Uh, the top three, uh, we would like to... Uh, um, I mean, definitely, uh, we will uh, give uh, special uh, rewards for the top three. And in addition to that, the, from uh, number four to 10, also we'll have some rewards, uh, kind of data <laughs> rewards, like uh, we'll get uh, um, top ups, data top ups. And then from 10 to 20, also another uh, set of uh, data top ups uh, we, will, uh, we will give you. Right? So up to the 20th place, uh, there is a possibility of getting. Uh, rewards and the top three we would also like to know the approach that you are using right so the top three uh, from the private leaderboard we will take and then ask you to do a very short presentation of what you did right and then we will confirm the top three now that's how normally these types of competitions work right because uh, yeah we would want to know uh, how you uh, came up and actually the com companies who sponsor that actually ask for that right this is a lot of money here i mean if you go to kegel uh, there are competitions where you can um, earn maybe 5,000 US dollars, or sorry, 50,000 US dollars uh, as a right. So, companies just uh, throw out their data and ask people to uh, use uh, machine learning uh, data science techniques to uh, uh, come up with a solution. And they would want to know how they did, uh, uh, I mean, who are the top people and how, how, how did they do it, right? So, yeah, like that, we will also ask you uh, to present the top three solutions and then we will confirm the top. Anything else to add? Uh, anybody else? I think, yeah, this is, uh, we just start this as a confidence building activity yes. for you. So that is why we didn't ask the companies for data sets or anything. We just don't worry. Try Give it a try. Uh, you will learn a lot. You will learn a lot about how to do it. And, and as uh, you listen to people, because it's not, it's not a thing that we are, I mean, data science is definitely not a field where you just can memorize things or like uh, try to recall on what is being said. You need to apply. You need to learn to apply, right? So don't be afraid. Uh, ask if you have the, any questions, ask in the forum or shoot any one of us an email. We would be able to help you uh, don't worry so this is just the beginning of a big journey uh, so we all what i think all what is important is what we want you to do is to participate so that also becomes a we have made that a challenge by telling you you should have three people in a group so you need to quickly form your groups and start doing it don't worry like i mean uh, probably we should have other things like the most active group kind of thing uh, awards as well so even if you don't really solve the challenge it is the approach that you get into uh, doing this that that would enrich your learning experience
Yeah, uh, Dr. Uday showed you the uh, process pipeline, but uh, uh, I would suggest, I mean, yes, definitely, but uh, would suggest uh, somehow get uh, one one solution, right? Right, uh, uploaded, right? Uh, and then see how you could improve on each one of them, because it's not a, it's not a kind of a, I mean, you did, uh, some of you have done software engineering, right? It's not a kind of a waterfall approach where you go through everything and then finally you get out, get the output. It's more of an iterative approach, right? So you get something going, right? And do a submission, right? And then keep on improving, keep on improving uh, in different areas, right? So even using, uh, because this data set is so small, right? Uh, normally in uh, data science, uh, sometimes, not always, uh, are quite large, but here you can even make a submission using a, uh, Excel spreadsheet, right, or a uh, Google uh, sheet, right? So because it's just a uh, uh, row of ones and zeros, right? Ones and zeros that you want with the IDs, right? Up two thousand five hundred fifteen, uh, uh, right? So yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, any other questions? Uh, can't hear. Maybe. Uh, um, it's Gaishan is talking, I feel his guest, but we are not able to hear. I think what happened was Gaishan is in the other meeting. I kind of ah, unmuted okay. it for them to hear that this meeting is still going on and that came back from his mic. I see. Sorry. <laughs> right, if there are no questions, uh, we can, and uh, everyone, you can still use the forums on the skills uh, course to tell us what you want. So because machine learning was picked up uh, as a topic, we came up with that. As you see, I mean, there are a lot of dedicated lecturers in the data search group. Data search group is also involved in uh, many interesting uh, research work. So we, we are willing to share with you whatever you want. All what we want from you is to tell us what you would like us to elaborate more. Dr. Shahan, if you can go a little up on the course um, yeah. to show that there is this, right? How can we collaborate? Uh, and oh, yeah, I, I will put another feedback thing on that. Uh, so please do tell us and uh, uh, we will be putting the recordings also, as you can see, the recording of the previous session is up there and we will put the second one as well. So, yeah, let me you. add one more thing. Uh, we do have another thing that you can do. I mean, in, in data science, a lot of times we need to, uh, I mean, uh, have uh, labels on data, right? So uh, to to uh, uh, to uh, train these models, right? The training data sets, uh, sets come from uh, having labels on data, right? So one, uh, another application in vehicles, right? So you have a video of vehicles and then we would want to find out what uh, what vehicle that is, right? So there is, uh, we have uh, prepared a, a small uh, data tagging. It's called data tagging task. And uh, uh, I will I will have that available on the Moodle. So if you are interested, you can try on that. And uh, uh, I'm, and also, uh, I mean, we, we are willing to give some rewards on that task, right? So for the number of tags that you put, right? So it's not, uh, yeah, right? So I will, I will have some information on that. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, we can close here or do yeah. we want, yeah. Any other questions uh, from the group or uh, we will uh, meet next week, right? Uh, yeah. We can have, a, we can look at the topics and we can yeah. even have a session on the challenge, right? Yes, yes. Whatever questions you have uh, uh, post on, we can uh, maybe, uh, I mean, uh, whatever challenges or common things that you have, we can maybe do a small uh, hands-on demo of uh, or explanation, right? That can be done because we have a, uh, quite a large team of uh, people involved in data science with a lot of experience, right? So uh, everybody will be able to pitch in and uh, share with you, right? So it's up to you to take advantage of the resources, uh, the potential that we have here, right? It's becoming department's largest research group. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a data search is a multidisciplinary cross faculty entity. So it's not just data search has resource people from other departments of the university as well. And we have a lot of quite a lot of industry collaborators also. So feel free to tell us what we can do for you and we will be doing that. And a competition is always uh, more interesting when you have more people. So don't uh, 
forget to spread the word across your friends and that would give you a better challenge right so don't think hey if we keep it to ourselves we would have a higher chance of winning we want all of you to be winners and that is why so as dr chan said we have just asked for some awards but we can keep on elaborating on this can the 17 batch participate in this competition dr shahan i believe yes right uh, yeah 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 yes 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 it, yes uh, it can even be a group from one from 17 batch to from 19 batch kind of thing. It doesn't matter. So, yeah. Right. Thank you. Dr. Jan, shall we call it? A yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for joining and uh, listening to us. And uh, yeah, we will uh, meet next week. Right? And uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uday and Buddhika, for taking my challenge and uh, doing things uh, in short. Right. Oh, okay. hope, we, hope we met your expectation. Thanks. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, that will be uh, validated from how well they perform on the challenge, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 that's an and, 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 objective way of measuring it. And the interest that they show. Yeah, yeah, that's an objective okay. way of measuring it. That's true. <laughs> okay, okay. Right, thank you and see you.